This is Speaking with the Enemy on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Here is Louis Butko. Yes, the show is Speaking with the Enemy, and it's brought to you by Red Tag. It's time to get together with redtag.ca. You can book your group vacation now and pay later, interest free, plus get a chance to win back up to $25,000 in cash back. Visit redtag.ca slash group offers for full details. The Enemy this week, week nine, the Toronto Argonauts, and in turn, The enemy is Mike Hogan. He's communications manager and play-by-play voice of the Argos. And you can find his musings at argonauts.ca. And uh, Hoagie, this is a uh, a big one, but it's also the first of four in five weeks. Uh, Lots of games we're going to be seeing between these two teams. I love it and I hate it. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like the fact that uh, the back-to-backs are there. I, I like the fact that we're getting closer to the Labor Day Classic. Um, but four and five weeks to me is a bit much. You know who's going to be a lot much for? Linemen hmm. on both sides. Like, if, if you think there's – these guys are intense. Like, you know the uh, the personalities of the Ticats players better than I do. But, you know, I know Dylan Wynn's pretty intense guy. I know the guys in the middle of our offensive line are pretty intense guys. Uh, by the fourth game in five game, fourth game in five weeks, do you think that Dylan Wynn and Darius Bladek are going to like each other a little bit? Um, it could be it could be really nasty by the end of the fourth game if if, if all of these guys stay healthy. So uh, there's part of me that's intrigued by that, but I just think it's too much of a good thing. Yeah, coach was talking about it yesterday and and mentioned how it'll be on the leaders of the team who are out there to control the emotions of everybody. How big of a messaging do you feel like that's been for Ryan Dinwiddie this week, especially considering the fourth quarter of, of Sunday's game, knowing that penalties can cost this team and and that could make the difference between an East final or, or, you know, not being in the situation. I take full responsibility for that because on the broadcast, (laughs) I mentioned how disciplined they had played. Oh no. Yeah, it was one of those. Hey, how about that shutout? Hey, good no hitter, buddy. Um, so that's what <laughs> happened. And at one point, they had taken three penalties in the fourth quarter, three penalties for 15 yards, um, and two of them were really undisciplined because they were guys who jumped on snap counts. It was like second and a yard, and twice they went offside. The O lineman jumped, and it put them in second and six instead of second and one. Um, which 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 was not disciplined, but the 15s it looked like had been cleared up in the 10s, and then two on the same play, and it was like, oh boy, and it cost them. Um, at that stage of the game, Ottawa had a three-point lead, and it looked like uh, the Argos had forced them into kicking a field goal, which would have been a six-point lead with three or four minutes left, and uh, the Argos would have gotten the ball at their own 40, and you know stupid penalties. And I'm sure the guys that took them would be the first guys to admit that. And that's been a problem that's that, that, that the coaching staff has tried to address. And boy, if it's been a problem playing Ottawa or Saskatchewan, it could be really intense when they play the Ticats. Yeah. I mean, we talked about the last time these two teams played outside of preseason. Of course we saw uh, each other in Guelph, but uh, that East final game, I mean, yeah. emotions ran high in that game. That's not bad. It only took you three minutes to break that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's it. Good for you. I was expecting, Check the time. Uh, uh, I, was but, I mean, to lead with that. Listen, you, you, the Argos had had a lot of good things happen last season against the Thai Cats. The East Final was not one of them. The yeah. second half of the East Final, I should say, was not one of them. There, there is some extra motivation in this game for the for some of the guys who were on that team uh, uh, on that December. December afternoon, that mild December afternoon in Toronto. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I hope so to an extent, mm-hmm. but I hope not too much. Uh, as you talked about Orlando trying to say, hey, you got to play within yourself and, and, and not let it get out of control uh, and, and be self-policing. Um, the Argos can't do that. I, I mean, they've, they've, they've got to say, hey, it's Hamilton. That was last year. Different team, different makeup. Um, if guys use it individually to motivate, I think that's great. I don't think you could do that on a team level, though. Um, I will admit in the offseason, um, when it was the middle of February or January, it was the dog days, and I'm looking and go, I have 412 bios to update here. 
Um, I'd look back at that game and go, oh man, I don't want that happening again. And uh, guys will use that as motivation. I'm sure guys in the weight room, uh, when they didn't want to do that in January, went, oh, damn tie cats and, and, and would make sure they did that extra weight work. Um, so yeah, it, it can be used as a motivational tool. Um, I think this is just a different team than it was a year ago. And I don't think Dinwiddie and the staff want to bring that up. Um, you know, uh, will they be looking at film from Dane Evans going, 16 for 16 this week probably uh, but probably less so than they'll be looking at what happened against uh, Montreal for the Ticats last week you mentioned this being a different team who who are the 2022 Toronto Argonauts through the first two months of the season do you get do you you have an idea of of the identity of this team yet it's a good not great team Mm -hmm. and what's keeping them from being great is consistency Um, this team will look astonishingly good for periods of 25 minutes. And then it's like a light switch flips and you go, how did that team turn into this team? So if they can, and and every pro football team, every high school football team, every college football team says, if we can only put together 60 minutes and the Ticats can say that, right? Oh, we had a great 30 minutes and then halftime came. How many, how many times on, you know, when you're doing post game? A few, you look, a, few uh, a few times, I'll give right. <laughs> right. So you guys are going, I think most teams yeah. are going through that. Hell, Winnipeg's going through that. You know, everybody says, oh, they're undefeated. They could very easily be below 500 right now um, because of some of the close games that they've been in. So I don't think there's a team that's been able to say consistently, we're a good team for 60 minutes. Ticats aren't there. Argos aren't there. And we'll see who's closer to playing 60 minutes on Saturday which is one of the big sort of subplots of this game. Um, Who's going to be able to play better for a longer period of time. And if, if the Argos can hang on to the football, uh, which they've had problems doing this year, I like their chances. If the Ticats are the dominant team for 45 minutes, well, it's going to be a long night at BMO. Let's talk about the law firm. Uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson obviously is, is the the guy. Uh, There's no question about that, but how have you seen him develop you know, having given been given the reins as the starter, I know you and I talked about that before the season. I mean, really, this was the first chance he was the anointed, no competition guy. How has he handled that role? Uh, for the most part, well, um, he's he's had flashes of inconsistency, like the entire team has. Um, you know, but the two games against Saskatchewan, aside from one bad interception in Regina. I think he played exceptionally well, and that's pretty good defense. And I know they were complaining in, in Regina about some of the, the COVID guys who were out and, and stuff like that, you know, uh, deal with it. The Argos had 17 guys on the injured list last week. Um, but he's, look, he's looked pretty good. Uh, he missed a couple of guys uh, on, on Sunday against Ottawa. But, you know, he's been putting up a lot of yards, and it's, it's that old bugaboo that the, the, the Argos have had for a couple of years, and that's finishing off drives, um, you know, having to settle for threes like they did when Boris Beattie kicked six field goals in the Eastern final last year, they put a couple of those in the end zone and they would have been playing Winnipeg last year. Hmm. Um, they just, especially, you know, in the first half, the play that Jagera Davis made in the end zone um, is still, you know, I still shake my head over that. Here's one that I bet you didn't know. Right. Hmm. I asked you Garrett Davis about that play. And for those who don't remember, there was a Foster DJ Foster released one to the back of the end zone And Jagera Davis from his end spot, followed the running back, went over to the sideline, turned around, looked for the football and knocked it down. Did you know Jagera Davis played safety in high school? What? No. Yes, neither did I. I did not. So for that, it was a normal move for him because he learned how to do it as a kid. And as his body kept getting bigger and bigger, it's like, well, you're not a safety anymore. (laughs) But that that was, and I don't think anybody knew that. So when they ran that play, they dialed it up. It was, it was. But perfectly yeah. good play. Nobody knew Jagger Davis was going to make that play. So yeah. I mean, the the Dane Evans strip sack too after the intercept. I mean, after the oh, fumble. I mean, there yeah. there there were great plays in that game by the yeah. Ty Cats. And you mentioned the performance of of number nine uh, in the second half and uh, after taking over. Uh, Andrew Harris. He seems like somebody who has uh, turned back the clock. I, I think uh, of that game. Uh, in uh, the the Atlantic game, I believe it was, uh, where he, he went off, or in Saskatchewan, excuse yep. me, where he went off. Um, is that, I mean, you can't expect a performance like that every week, but what are they hoping to get out of Trevor Harris through the th- full 18-game season? Because, you know, we think 
he, he's not a young man anymore, but uh, obviously a, a, a key contributor still. Yeah, he's he's dynamite. Um, I, I, it was great because I got the I had the opportunity. You, I've watched almost every CFL game from up top, right? Yeah. Uh, I got to watch that game from the sidelines. And if you think Andrew Harris runs hard, you have no idea how hard Andrew Harris runs until you see him from field level. Um, the intensity that he brings on the bench. Um, he's the real deal. And if he can stay healthy, and I know there's a lot made about load management, a, a term we heard a lot in Toronto with Kawhi Leonard a few years ago. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, I, I think in a perfect world, he tried to limit his touches. Um, Ottawa basically did that for Coach Dinwiddie last week by putting an extra guy in the box for the entire game. So the running game wasn't there. They tried to get him his touches by throwing him the football. So um, he's got that threat. He's a great blocker. He's a complete football player. And if you see him on the sidelines, you see him in the locker room, you hang out with him, he doesn't seem like he's in his mid-30s. Uh, he seems like he's 25. He's, he's a beast. He runs hard. And uh, is it a concern? I, well, I, I think, yeah, the, the, the calendar is undefeated, right? Um, but right now, he's, he's, he's a unique running back, and maybe he's going to do for the running back position what a guy like Tom Brady did for quarterbacks and, and extend somebody's career by five years that you don't expect them to get. Um, I think a lot of people look at a running back and say, oh, he's 30, next. Um, and Winnipeg did that with Andrew Harris this year. Hamilton did that with Speedy B this year. Um, and right now the Argos have benefited from both. You mentioned Speedy B, you mentioned JG earlier as well. So let's go there. Uh, I get the sense, I think it'll be weird next. I mean, we saw him in the double blue in, in Guelph. It'll be weird next week seeing him come back to Tim Horton's field, uh, that being Speedy B. But just going against him, I, I think uh, there's going to be some a lot of mixed feelings on both sides. Is it safe to say that that Brandon is a little extra motivated for this one on Saturday? That's why I talked to him at length yesterday, an article coming out on Argonauts.ca. So even Ticat fans, I think, will like this one. Um, I talked to him about that, and he's trying to make it just another game um, in his mind. He, he kind of joked. He said, yeah, it'll be a, a, it's just another game, but I, I, I'll probably get up a little early on Saturday. Um, so he's he knows it. I asked him what he, I said, if it's not a touchdown or a big play, like if it's a, a mundane seven yard completion, the first catch he makes, what do you think Ticat fans are going to do? And he said, I think it'll be a mixture. Um, he said, you know, some fans are going to going to boo. Some fans are going to cheer. Um, and he said, that's great. Cause he, he had nothing but good times in Hamilton and, and, and knows that there was a lot of love there. And it obviously didn't end the way he wanted it to. But the one thing he said about coming to Toronto, it's made football fun again. Um, he said he had a really tough year last year between injuries and, you know, just the COVID lost year and his mental standpoint and physically. And he said he's having fun again. And he said that's been so important to him. And uh, he also, I asked, said, how long did it take for you to realize that you're wearing double blue? And he said, week three. And I said, of camp? He said, no, of the regular season. He said it took that long for him to go, okay, you know, when he ran down uh, the tunnel at uh, BMO Field and kind of got that atmosphere and said, man, I'm in blue now. Um, he's all in. He's dialed all in now. And uh, he obviously has good memories from Hamilton, but uh, this is going to pain you and, and, and folks watching right now. But he's an Argo, yeah. and, and he knows it, and he's embracing it, and his coach and, and teammates are embracing him. He's a really popular guy with his teammates. So – uh, it's it's fit in and same with Andrew Harris and, and you Garrett um, you know you bring in guys like that with that kind of uh, CV and you hope for the best and all three the expectations have been exceeded not only on the field but off yeah I mean you you saw uh, Speedy make that big play uh, in last week's game against uh, Ottawa and just that that tricky spot too with the sun right in his eyes a great play by Speedy and it's Always great to see him still making an impact. I went to BMO Field, I believe it was the season opener on Thursday. And the one thing that stood out to me was uh, the families and, and the real push to get teams and young families and diverse families to BMO Field. And, and I think for Ticats fans who are making the trip, A, I know they'll be on their best behavior, but B, it better be. I, yeah, of course, of <laughs> course. And, and A, be on your best behavior, but B, just take a second and look around 
because I, again, I'm, I'm just I'm appreciating what the Argos have done here to create a family atmosphere at BMO field. Uh, you know, you mentioned the, the $3 hot dogs and the $7 beers that uh, you got going on there at uh, BMO field, but it feels like it's been an emphasis to get different groups and, and, and newer Canadians specifically. It felt like there's real emphasis on that at BMO. Yeah. Here's it, it, you know, we love the rivalry. You love punk and the Argos. I love punk and the Thai cats, but here's one thing. I think everybody who is involved in this rivalry, uh, either working for a team on the periphery or a fan wants, they want to see Tim Hortons field filled every night. They want to see BMO fill, field filled every night. And the one thing as an organization that we've tried to do is target the people you're talking about. And it drives me insane when I hear MLSC is not marketing the Argos. The Argos don't market. The Argos don't market. What we've been doing is doing exactly what you say. So you might not see it, but we've been going hard after youth football groups. Uh, we've been going into groups of quote unquote new Canadians. And, uh, you know, last year, I haven't done one this year yet. Last year, on a couple of occasions, we had large groups of, of people coming in to BMO Field for the first time to see a CFL game. Uh, in, in, in some instances, some of them didn't speak English. Um, they were, uh, both groups were from Asia. And we brought them in and I kind of taught them about the rules like, okay, you'll see two sticks on the sidelines, 10 yards apart. They have three tries, they call them downs, but three, like really yeah. trying to, I don't want to use dumb it down, but yeah, simplify, yeah, yeah. simplify the rules so they, they can follow along what's going on. And trying to get those people coming to a new country to experience this and sell it as the most unique game there is. Uh, in terms of Canadian, there are two uniquely Canadian sports, three down football and five pin bowling, right? <laughs> you can play hockey in Sweden, right? You can play lacrosse in the United States. Three down football is unique to Canada. And it's something that we have to really emphasize. And we've been doing that. And our season tickets are up substantially. Uh, our group sales are up. We're going to have a higher attendance this year than we have in the past. And I think you're going to start seeing that on Saturday. Uh, we had a big campaign last week to try and fill the seats for the three games in August uh, that worked out really well. Um, our schedule, you mentioned the Thursday night game. We had a Monday night game and we had a Sunday late afternoon game on a long weekend. Yeah. Those are our three games so far. So has attendance been great? Hell no. Uh, is it going to be better this year? Yes. Is it going to be better next year? Yes. Um, Anybody who thinks that, that MLSC bought this team was going to come in and flip a light switch and all of a sudden the building would be filled is, is naive. Um, sports are feeling this. Sports, uh, All sports seem to be getting hit with live attendance because TV programming keeps getting better and there is added cost and we know there's kind of inflation uh, worldwide right now. So that's what we're trying to do in Toronto. We, we feel it's going to pay off. There are going to be gradual steps this year um and it's and going forward and i'm glad you mentioned that because we've really been targeting younger crowds and younger families and trying to get those people in the seats and anecdotally it's paid off because i'll ask my wife who goes to a game or i'll ask one of the guys on the sidelines did you get a chance to look up in the stands and on more than one occasions i've heard man are there a lot of young people here this year yeah and that's what that's what we have to do um we all know, and it's been a big complaint for years about the average age of the CFL fan, right? It's an older demo. We've got to get younger to survive. That's not just the Argos. That's the Ticats. That's the Elks. That's the Stampeders. That's the Alouettes. And, and I think every team is cognizant of that or trying to get that younger demo. And, 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 that's absolutely the case here in Toronto. And I'm glad you noticed that. Yeah. Like I said, did not go unnoticed uh, when I was there for their, uh, that season opener against the Alouettes. Uh, and then I would just add this for Ty Cats fans who are going to the next game. Uh, is that during CNE? Is that going to get you into yes. the, uh, yeah. So there you go. You get uh, a ticket. So it's the pre Labor Day. Normally it's the Labor Day. And then there's a Labor Day rematch the week before this time it's flipped, right? It's Labor Day. This is, the, this is the second game of the doubleheader. I, 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 I take things one day at a time here, uh, Hoagie. So I'm, I'm, I'm just lucky. I remember that they were playing the Argos and called you instead of AJ uh, in Ottawa this morning. So <laughs> well, at least you didn't call me AJ. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but that's another thing that we wanted to do. And we fought hard to get those two CNE dates mm -hmm. uh, because obviously Labor Day uh, is going to be in Hamilton. So we tried to get two of the preceding games and the fact that it was the Ticats 
you know, even better because it gives Hamilton fans who would be normally coming down to see the CNE anyway, an opportunity to come down, watch the Argos and Ticats play and get into the CNE. It's a free admission to the CNE with your ticket. And that's not this week. That's the 26, 25, yeah. whatever, whatever. Uh, it's down the road. We're, we're, we're focused this week. And uh, that's where. I that's think where... we have nine more games between the Argos and Ticats before that one. Uh, well, how about this? It's time to get together. How about that? And with Red Tag, you can book your group vacation now and pay later interest-free, plus get a chance to win back up to $25,000 in cash back. Visit redtag.ca slash group offers for full details. This has been Speaking with the Enemy. The Enemy, Mike Hogan. Hoagie, thanks for doing this as always. I love it. Anytime, pal.